let's talk about liquid phase reactions. Now, thus far, everything we've focused on, um, while I have shared the equations that we would use for liquid phase, all of our examples have been in the vapor phase. And vapor phase is quite often favored in industry because uh, vapors uh, mix very easily, have really good contact with each other um, in ways that require a lot more effort to get that kind of good contact in a, a liquid phase. Nevertheless, uh, there are some reactions that happen in the liquid phase and we should really think about how we work with that. So uh, K equilibrium, same as it's been before, E to the negative delta G over RT. And we remember we've adjusted that delta T, uh, that delta G for temperatures. And it's equal to uh, the product of all of the activities raised to the stoichiometric coefficient, which is the same thing as saying the product of all the fugacities uh, raised to the stoichiometric coefficient. So in a uh, liquid, we can't use the ideal gas assumption. So we can't have yi times p is what we sub in here. Uh, so we tend to use the activity version when we think about uh, liquids. And quite often in liquids, um, when we're using activity, uh, we might be able to assume ideal solution. That is gamma uh, equals one when you have ideal solution. And the reason we might be able to assume ideal solution is if we are working in a dilute solution. Remember, thermodynamics operates in terms of mole fractions, whereas normal life operates in terms of things like grams per liter. And even things that seem quite concentrated, remember seawater, uh, are extremely dilute from the standpoint of moles. So even though we might have some components that we know aren't an ideal solution with water, we might be close enough to pure water uh, in an aqueous system that we can get away with using the ideal solution assumption uh, while calculating our activities. So if we're assuming ideal solution, which again, it's not a bad starting point um, for reacting systems when you know they're dilute, uh, what our activities will turn into is Xi raised to the nu i power. And pressure just doesn't show up um, unless uh, we're working at a very high pressure where the behavior of liquids starts being weird. So it's just pi xi gamma i, or just xi raised up to the new i power, and uh, it's pretty friendly relative to what we've been doing with gases, right? I mean, it's a slightly simpler thing to solve. All right, enjoy. So let's look at our problem of the day for solving a liquid phase reaction. You will note that uh, today I can't use steam reformation of methane. I can't use steam reformation of methane because it's just not a thing that we'd really ever react in the liquid phase. So I'm gonna give you a, a fun little problem uh, that I came up with and let's see how this works. So let's imagine we have some ethylene. Ethylene is a hormone uh, in plant systems. Uh, so it is, uh, even though it is a gas at room temperature, uh, it's popular and easy to, to sort of dissolve that in, uh, in water. Um, you could have a glass of water next to a ripe banana and you'll end up with a little bit of ethylene in there probably. Um, and ethylene will react with water to produce ethanol. And so I want us to figure out, is this something we need to, to be concerned about? Is this a reaction that we expect will move forward appreciably under ambient conditions? So we're gonna assume this is in the liquid phase. Uh, the ethylene is gonna be dissolved so, you know, like it's, it's sort of a liquid. We call that a, yeah, it's, it's not really a liquid, but it's, in, uh, it's moving with the liquid. The water is liquid, the ethanol would be liquid. Um, the low, mole fraction of, of everything involved is gonna be extremely low. Because remember, again, uh, like with seawater, um, it doesn't take uh, a lot of concentration in terms of grams per liter to be uh, to, for us to perceive a, uh, the presence of a chemical, even though on a mole fraction basis, it's still quite small. Um, so let's assume ideal solution because this is going to come out incredibly dilute. And let's say we have uh, a liter of water that we saturate completely with ethylene at room temperature. And well, we'll say atmospheric pressure, even though that's not gonna show up in your equations. 
what do we expect uh, the results of this to be at chemical equilibrium? So we start with uh, pure water and uh, we are gonna use, I'm gonna give you a, a number for the solubility in a second. I gotta write it down here. Uh, <laughs> um, this, uh, oh, and I guess uh, a thing I wanted to note is we can't always assume ideal solution because there are liquid systems that are not dilute. Uh, there's also liquid systems that are using chemicals that are kind of weird and will never behave uh, in an ideal fashion, such as acids. But coming back, if we have one liter of water at 298K at the maximum solubility of ethylene, uh, which I went and looked up, it's about 0.13 grams per kilogram of water. Uh, so we, we got some unit conversions ahead of us. Uh, what do we expect to happen uh, in this reaction at equilibrium? So what's the capital K? Uh, what uh, is the outcome when you try and solve for C. Okay, so that's what I want you to do. Moving forward here, uh, it should be it should be interesting. Um, we're going to be working with pretty small numbers because uh, the concentration of water is going to be so close to one. Uh, so be prepared to carry a lot of decimal places in this computation to be able to make it come out right. Um, I have the uh, delta G of formation for liquid ethanol there for your reference. Liquid water is in the book. Um, and for ethylene, we will just use its delta G of formation uh, as normal as it's computed in Appendix E. Thanks a lot. See ya.